for those in house. We'll be looking at the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verses 9 and 10. The Lord will give us grace. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. Although I got my message ready using the King James Version, but I'm using the New American Version. It says, the heart, the heart, sorry, the heart is more deceitful than all else. And is desperately sick. Who can understand it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the man, even to give each man according to his ways, according to the result of his deed. I use the King James Version. It says, the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked, who can know it? God is saying, I, the Lord, search the heart, test the man, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So today we've been looking at the heart. The heart is such a vast topic in the Bible. But we'll be looking at a bit of it today. And for some of us that are scientific, that understands the biological term heart and what it does in the body, we're not talking about that. We're looking into what the Bible uses the heart as. The Bible says that the heart, the understanding of the Bible, of the heart in the Bible, it is the emotion and where our desires stem from. It is the spiritual part where our emotions and our desires dwell. And that is the sum, to, it's, it's the sum total or the product of who we are. Because when the Bible is talking about the heart, it's talking about your spirit. And somebody might say, why the heart? God talks about the heart himself. He looked at a man, David. He said that he will call David. He has anointed, he is called David because he's a man that will do after his own heart. God himself has a heart. So today we'll be looking at the heart. And I'll first of all look at that verse 9. But I will go back to where I use that New King James Version. It says the heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. It says who can know it? And I believe that this heart is talking about my heart, your heart, the heart of every man when we were unregenerated, the heart of the fallen nature, of the fallen nature. But there are some people that have given their lives to Christ, that their heart, they have not been transformed. Their heart is still playing in this woman. And that's the essence of us looking at this to understand it's the heart of the fallen nature and that heart of the fallen nature is a man that whose heart has not been transformed it's a heart that is still living in the state of the old you know I started by looking at a place where Jesus used such nature. And it's taken from the book of Mark, chapter 7. Reading from verse 21 to 23, I'll just see what it says. Mark 7. I'll be reading from verse 21. To 23. And this is Jesus was answering them when there was like they were asking me a question about what goes in and what comes out, what they eat and what they don't eat. But in looking at verse 21, 
I'm still using the American version of this one. He said, from, for, from within, out of your heart, out of the heart of men, proceed the evil thoughts, fornications, thefts, murders, adulteries, deeds of coveting and weaknesses as well, sorry, and wickedness, sorry, as well as the same, sensuality, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. Verse Jesus said that all these things, all these evil things proceed from within your heart and defile the man. And they were asking him about them what they were eating. He said that what we eat goes through our mouth and through the stomach and it goes out. It doesn't touch our heart. It doesn't touch our being. It has a separate way it goes. So he's looking at this. I want to ask a question as we continue. You don't need to answer me, but think about it. If Jesus is talking about that from within the heart comes out of proceed the evil thoughts. Evil thoughts to kill, to destroy, to manipulate, to defraud. Evil thoughts of fornications. Evil thoughts of stealing, of killing, of committing adulteries. This of taking what doesn't belong to you, wickedness in all its ramifications, as well as the sin, sensuality, like those that strip themselves naked and doing all sorts of things. I believe there's a match going on today of perverse nature, envy, slander. Pride and foolishness. And the Bible says that they all come from within to defile the man. We are looking at Proverbs. He said that the heart is deceitful above all else. And desperately wicked, who can know it? And Jesus is talking about this heart. And we're looking at that heart as the heart of unregenerated man, of the fallen, of, of fallen man. And today I want to ask you, you don't need to answer me, answer yourself and to God. What is your heart like? What are you capable of doing? And that's sometimes we will say that our heart is in tune with God. That we are not capable of doing anything evil. But I want to look at a man. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 7 to 14. Let's look at that man. Many of us will say we are not capable of doing things. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 7 to 14. Praise the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 7 to 14. And this is Elisha. Then Elisha came to Damascus. Now Ben Haggad, the king of Aaron, was sick. And he was told him, saying, The man of God has come here. A man of God came to a place. And the king from another nation heard of it. And that king was sick. Verse 1. The, verse 8. And the king said to Hazel, Take a gift in your hand and go to meet the man of God and inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Will I recover from this sickness? So Hazel went to meet him and took a gift, 
in his hand, even every kind of good things to Damascus. Every kind of good things of Damascus. Forty camels, loads. And he came and stood before him and said, You, your son Ben Haddad, king of Aram, has sent me to you, saying, Will I recover from this sickness? Let's look at what happened. Then Elijah said to him, God said to him, You shall surely recover, but the Lord has shown me that he will certainly die. Mm. Verse 11, And he fixed his gaze steadily on him until he was ashamed, and the man of God wept. You remember that Jesus wept. Verse 12, and Hezekiah said, Why does my Lord weep? Then he answered, Because I know the evil. This is Elijah talking to Hazel. Hazel, I know what? The evil. the evil that you will do to the sons of Israel. Their strongholds, you will set on fire. You will set on fire, and their young men you will kill with the sword, and their little ones you will dash in pieces, and their women with child you will reap. Verse 13. Then he has said, But what is your servant? Who is it? Who is but a dog that you he should do this great thing? And Elisha answered. The Lord has shown me that you will be king over Aram. So he departed from Elisha and returned to his master, who said to him, What did Elisha say to you? And he answered, He told me that you will surely recover. The rest is history. You see, as Hazel, being a man that doesn't know his heart, the Bible says, who can know it? It's only the Lord that knows what our heart is like. Hazel went on a message, on an error, as was directed by the master. And Hazel went to the man of God. And the man of God said, surely the man will recover. But Hazel, God has already seen through Elijah that Hazel will kill the master. It wasn't that it was Elisha that told him to kill. But Elisha saw. You know what? Why the Bible says who can know it? It's a spirit that enters a man to change. When Saul was anointed, the king, you know, before he was anointed, when he met the prophet, Samuel, the Bible said that Samuel instructed him to go, that he would meet the sons of prophet. As he meets them, that his heart will change. And that he will become a new man. There are people, when the spirit enters them, they become the worst of them. Or they become the best of them. But it's a spirit thing. And that is the heart. Who can know it? You know, many of us don't know whether we are left with bags of money, we will denounce Jesus and steal that money. Many of us don't know if you are a man or a woman, if you are left with the opposite sex for, for days, for hours, for seconds, whether our heart will not will keep us sane or cause us to sin. And that's why he says, from within the heart, the thoughts, the, the, the emotion, the, 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 the ability enables you to commit those things. Who can do? And it's only the Lord that can know it. You know, moving on. The 
question I want to ask. I've seen brothers, I've seen sisters growing up eating from the same plate as they were young, laughing and playing together as they were young. And when they grow up, they become our enemies. It is the point of even killing them, trying to kill themselves, and some even kill themselves. What happened? Why did that happen? These are people from the same biological parents. These are friends that grew up together. The heart is the same. Desperate. But no one knows what will happen. You know, when we allow ourselves to be swayed by the things we hear, by the things we see, by the things we touch, by the things we feel, and by those things that we smell, we can change. Sometimes the compliments, the smiles that people give to you can cause you to change. You know, many of us here are product of what people have said about us and we believe it and we start working attempting to be that which people have said. Because we've been complimented. We've been, we've, people are smart. People have told us that you look like this, you act like this, you work like this, you will be this. But these are the things that they tell you from their own emotions, not their own thoughts, their own mind not from their heart. Because if the heart is of God, what they will say will be something that will be spoken by the mouth of God. You know, in the Bible, we see that many decisions were made through dreams. Orchestrated by God. That means it's coming from your inner being. Many decisions were made by the words spoken by the Spirit of the Lord to move you into your assignment, to move you into your purpose, to move you into the destiny that God has ordained for you. Because it's communicated to your heart and you receive it. But those ones that are communicated even to your heart through the mind, through the mind as a result of what you hear, what you touch, what you sense, what you smell, what people say about you. It brings me to it brings me to mind. A man in the Bible, in one somewhere 16 by 6 and 7. And that's earlier. If somebody can find it, help, help me to read it. One someone, sixteen, six or seven. said to Samuel, do not look at his appearance or at his physical stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord does not see as man sees. For man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Praise the Lord. Thank you. You know, in this passage, we are looking at the man. Maybe he fits. The word statue of a man that will become a king. A man that God has chosen. A man that is looking right and proper. A man that walks right. A man that talks right. A man that 
overlooks everything that you can think about. And so many men and women, when we are looking for our life partners, we look at the fashion, the things that we want to see. And these are the way we make choices. The prophet Samuel looked that way. He said, he looked at the man and he said, exactly, this is the Lord's anointing. And God said, no. I make my choice based on the heart. The men make their choice based on what they see. The way the people talk. The way the people walk. The way they dress. I was listening to something of a man. That they were stuck a, a man of God that he doesn't talk well, he doesn't preach well, but he's a man that was chosen by God. And somebody said, came to the person and said, I will make you to talk well so that people will listen to you and people will do this to you. And the man of God said, Come and began to prophesy to the person. To tell the person an ailment that was on the inside of that person. And he said, it's true. And the man said, in the name of Jesus. And the man delivered the person. He said, this is what I'm called to. The man of God told the young man, this is what I'm called to do. I'm not called to be a perfect preacher. I'm not called to be a perfect speaker. I'm called to demonstrate the power of God. I'm called to minister the glory of God, the grace of God. If many of us can focus on what we are called to do, on what God has put in our mind to do without listening to people on how to improve it, but listening to God on how to improve it, things will be better. See, earlier, was a chosen person by God, by man, but he was rejected by God. You know, these are the way men choose their leaders. But they don't know what is in the heart of the leader. You see, many of us, because we are led through what we hear, what we see, what we feel, what we touch, and what people tell us, and the smiles that we receive. Many people have missed their destination in life, their purposes in life. However, for those that have listened to what God has said, they have made it. It's a missing destiny. It's not as a result of you being rich or being poor. It's as a result of meeting the core purpose for which God has come. Being at the right place at the right time. The Bible says for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he would destroy the works of the devil. What is your purpose? Are you pursuing it? Are you looking unto men to tell you what you are good at? You know, there are so many people, they go to people, they assess them, they say, this is where you make it in. You can make it in that way, but you have lost it with God. Mm. Make it as men will talk about it, but you've lost it as God will have it. You know, I don't need to read this. In the book of Genesis, chapter 3, if, 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 from verse 1 to 5, or 1, 1 to 6, then many 4 and 5, 4 to 4 and 5. You know, the, the devil through the serpent came to Eve and gave Eve a scenario of what they would be like if they rebelled against God. Based on what they saw, based on what they've heard, based on the things they were told that they would receive, they disobeyed God and rebelled. And that's why man has fallen. I 
are many people who hear other men not knowing that the devil has entered them. To lead them astray to what God has called them. That they might fall. They might miss the purpose of God. The miracles of God. The, the, the building of the kingdom of God. Because they have listened to the serpent. And I spoke to them. Through a man. A woman. The Bible said that verse now. Who can know it? And verse 10 it says, I want you to hold on to who can know it. Let's look at verse 10. Of that Jeremiah 17, verse 10. Who can know it? He said, I the Lord. Let me look at the King James. He said, I the Lord search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. I want us to look at this scripture. There are things that Jesus, God said in this one. He said, he is the one that searches the heart and tests the mind. That means he, wants, he does that to find out what you are made of and what you are capable of doing. And he, as he does that, like, even to give every one of us according to our ways, according to the fruit of what we have done or what we'll do. It's only God that knows. It's only God that knows. I want to look at some scriptures. I've spoken about Acts. 1322 about David, the man after God's heart, that God chose to be the king because he found him faithful even before he anointed him as the king. I want someone to look at 1 Samuel, I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 2 verse 35. 1 Samuel 2 verse 35. Someone to testify. That's what I have with this. And I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do a Praise the Lord. You see, God says that he will raise up for himself a faithful priest that will do according to all that is in his heart, in his heart and in his mind. And he will build him a sure house. Could that be David? Is there, was there any other person that God spoke about? But God is talking about the person that will minister according to his own heart. The person that will hear him. The person that will do according to his will. You know, I believe that could be you as well. Because God blessing you up to do according to all that he in heart. All that is his mind. To do according to his will. I want to know that God will build you a sure Why do I say that? There was a man in the Bible, David, God built him a sure house. There was another man, Jehu, because of his obedience to do all that God told him to do. Even though he walked wickedly, God established himself unto the fourth generation. Because God told him, whatever you do, up to that fourth generation, I will cause your seed to continue to rule. But if they continue with me, they will continue forever. But they did it, and Jehu did it. God knows. God knows. I want to read the place. Jeremiah 4 verse 15. Oh, it's in red. So 
someone read it, isn't it? No. Yeah, that's the one the young man read. He went to one side and said to Oh, is that okay? So Jeremiah 3.15. He said, then I will give you a shepherd. Is, is the same thing. After my own heart, who will feed on the knowledge and understand. You know, God wants us to be his shepherd, his pastors. Regardless of where you are, regardless of what you're doing, he wants you to be someone that will be giving others what is right for them. Oh, Jesus. And the last one I want to look at is from Psalm 44, verse 21. He said, will not God find out, for he knows the secrets of the heart. God knows the secrets of our own heart. He said, who can know it? No man can know that God knows. He is the only one, the Bible said, I, the Lord, searches the heart and I test the man. He is the only one that knows the heart and, know, and, and knows what is in your mind. If God is the one that knows and, and the fallen nature, we have the wicked heart, the evil heart. As children that have been regenerated, that have received Christ as our Lord, as those that have received a new nature, God wants us to do something different. He wants us to guard our hearts. Oh, Jesus. Mm. Proverbs 4.23. Let's look at what he says. Proverbs 4.23. It talks about guarding your heart with all diligence that out of his springs. Okay, go. At Proverbs 4.23. Proverbs 4 verse 23. Above all else, guard your heart, for it affects everything you do. Praise the Lord. I like that version. <laughs> guard your for it affects everything you do. New American Standard says... Watch over your heart with diligence, with all diligence, for from it flow the springs of life. King James said, out of it comes the issues of life. You should guard your heart, for from it flows the springs of life. How do you guard your heart? That means... If your heart is tender, you're giving your life, you receive the new creature. We are talking about guarding a heart that has been regenerated. A heart, like we said about Saul, King Saul, that when the Spirit of the Lord encountered him, his heart changed. We are talking of a heart. Let's look at um, Ezekiel 36, 26. Ezekiel 36, 26. Where God promised to give us a new heart and take away the heart of stone. Ezekiel 36. Yes, sir. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Thank you. You see, when we give our lives to Christ, we receive a new nature. The Bible says, For behold, all things are passing away. And every other thing has become new. There 
is a change that comes in a man's life when they receive and when they give their heart to Christ. Jesus become the custodian of the heart of that person. The Bible said, if we are in Christ, we are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You, you, you are loud in your heart. It happens in the heart. But that doesn't mean that as it happens in the heart, it automatically happens in your body and your soul. The Lord said, guard your heart with all diligence. For from it flows the issues of life. You know, our actions, our pursuits in life as a result of the things we feel from within. The things that people have told us. I want us to know there's an enemy bent on thwarting the will of God. And that enemy can come through disappointment, through failures, through temptation, to cause you to cause God. And that's why the Bible wants us to trust in the Lord. Let's look at Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6. To trust in the Lord. With all our hearts. And in all our ways. Let's look at it. Proverbs. Proverbs, Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And he will direct your path. Praise the Lord. Thank you my sister. Um, let me look at what New American Bible standards says. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean in your own understanding. You know, many times we fail because we think we know it more than all. Mm -hmm. And we choose not to receive counsel. He said, do not lean in all your understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will yeah, yeah. make your path straight. Trusting in the Lord. And that trusting in the Lord is the faith you have that God will cause all things to work together for Amen. good. Because you love Him. Because you are the called according to His purpose. The faith that you have, that the Bible says that those that come to Him must first believe that He is. You have believed that He is the changer. Amen. That changes not. He is the one that can change the circumstances that the enemy has thrown your way. The disappointment, the failures, the accusations that come your way. You know, as children of God, our lives are full of warfare. Mm. And somebody might say, do we mean that we have to fight until we die? Yes, that's what I meant actually. Mm. It takes warfare for you to give your life to Christ because many people will have prayed for you, believed for you, spent time to talk to the Lord to break the power of the enemy that will hinder you from coming to Christ. And that's what you are meant to do for others. Praying for their salvation. That's warfare. That's taking another person from the enemy's camp. And as I've already said, at New Birth, we change our loyalty, our nature. Because the gospel is believed. You have come to believe that Jesus came from above. 
that he is fully God and fully man. He was born by a virgin, Mary. That means he had no biological father. He lived here as a man without sin. He went to the cross and died. The Bible says that he was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead and ascended unto heaven. You have come to believe that. And as you believe that, that because he lives, that you yourself will live. As you give your life to Christ, having given your life, if your nature has already changed on the inside. But the transformation continues. And that's the discipleship. The transformation that will transform your heart. From its original location to where God will say a man after my own heart. To transform your heart to the place where God saw and gave you salvation. Let's look at Romans 12. Verse 1 and 2. He said, I urge you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. I urge you, who, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies. A living and holy sacrifice. I want to look at this. God in his word is telling each and every one of us to present our bodies to become what? A living. That means a body that is alive. And a body that is holy. And we present it unto God. That means at every point in time, our bodies should be living, it should be holy, and we present it on the altar unto God as a living sacrifice. And the Bible says it is God's acceptable form of worship. But let's look at verse 2. It said, do not conform to this word. That means don't remain where you were before. There has to be a change. But be transformed by renewing your mind. That means <laughs> what goes into your heart, into your head, let it be going into your mind, into your heart. As you continue to renew what you read, what you hear, according to the word of God, according to prayer, according to fellowship, according to everything that you are receiving from the Lord, your worship, by renewing your mind, that you might prove what is what, what the will of God is, which is good, acceptable. You see, there has to be a transformation. It can come in any way through discipleship, through reading of the Bible, through prayer. One interesting one that comes to mind is Paul. When he gave his life, he started ministry. And within a while, he went on exile, self-imposed exile to Arabia. For many years, he had revelations from God. And he got his own scripture and revelation. And that was a transformation for him. And these things are the things that we have to look up to. Because these are warfare. These are changing yourself from the status quo to God's agenda. 
Shutting your eyes and your mind from the things of the world to the things of the spirit. Thank you, Jesus. You know, David, when he sinned against God, having killed Uzziah, the, the, the husband of Bathsheba, and he was praying in the book of Psalm 51. Verse 10. He was asking the Lord to create in him a new heart and renew a right spirit within him. He said, This is exactly what God wants to do in each and every one of us. He wants to give you a new heart and a new birth. But he wants to create, renew a right spirit, the spirit of God moving on the inside of you. You know, Hebrews 4, verse 2. We close it. Hebrews 4, verse 2. He said that for the word of the Lord, for what of the word of God is living and active. A sharper than any two-edged sword. And piercing as far as the division of the soul and spirit of both joy and marrow, and is able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. God wants to judge through our own effort to bring judgment to the intentions and the thoughts of our own. And when the, when the word of God judges it, it makes it to align itself to the will of God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. It makes it to align itself to the will of God. But God can only judge it when the word becomes your authority. You know, I didn't say when the scripture becomes your authority. It's when the word that becomes your authority. The word that's able to give you inheritance among those that are sanctified. The word that's able to build you up and give you that inheritance. The word of God that became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The glory as of the begotten of the Father. Fool. Of grace and truth. When the word becomes your authority, you know there are many of us today that might hear this tomorrow, that are listening to this today, and they might be saying, "God, how what will happen to me in ten years' time with my heart?" Oh, Jesus. My siblings that we are talking today, would there be a tomorrow that we won't be talking? Mm. My friends that we are talking and are exposing everything about me, will, will the person backbite me? Will the person stop me tomorrow? Oh, Jesus. That's why today God wants to speak to us in this area. He wants us to come to a place where our heart will be renewed and we will be able to use the word of God to judge everything that is not of him. So that tomorrow you will look back and say, okay, oh, true. My heart is not desperately wicked and it won't be wicked and it will continue to be the heart after God's A heart that pleases God. A heart that teaches understanding and knowledge. A heart that works in the path of God. A heart that David said, create in me a new heart. I renew the right spirit with you. For many of us out there, are your thoughts and the intentions of your heart wicked? Are they in line or not in line with the will of God? 
Are you attempting to poison someone? Are you attempting to kill someone? Are you attempting to defraud? Are you attempting to murder? What is it that you are attempting to? Are you living the faith to go and become someone that will live sensually? Today, Jesus has come to give you a new heart and to take away the heart of stone and give you the heart of flesh, the heart that will seek after God himself. If there's anyone here where our eyes are closed and our head if there's anyone here that will serve and there is Samson, I want the Lord to change my heart. To grant me a new heart and renew a right spirit within me. That my spirit will no longer be the spirit of the enemy. The spirit that worked on Eve to cause Adam and Eve to cause them to rebel against God. There will be a spirit that will work in you to give you a purpose in God. To do after his own heart and after his own way. Today, if you want Jesus to change you. For those at their homes, could you just kneel wherever you are? And for those here that we said that Jesus, I want you to touch my heart. If you can just kneel where you are in this place, don't come. And repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I bring before you my own heart as it is. Lord, you know it. You are the one that searches. Repeat after me. Lord, you know it. You are the one that searches. Search my heart. Change my heart. Take away the heart of stone and create in me the heart of flesh. The heart that will walk after you. The heart that will love you. The heart that will do after your own will. Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Forgive me and cleanse me with the blood you shed on the cross of Calvary. Today, I receive the newborn nature of Christ. The heart of God. The heart that pleases God. In Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, baptize me with your spirit. And cause that spirit to begin to renew and take over every negative spirit that was previously operating in my life. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Father, for those that have not received you before, that have received Jesus as their Lord and Savior, I ask this day, my Father, that you fill them with your spirit. Yes. Keep them by the power that is in the name of yes. Jesus. Father, cause them to go to places where their minds and their hearts will be transformed. Father, we love you. 